Hello, everybody. Is it real? I have so much to say about understanding if it is real. Because there's so many dates that coexist with a lot of stuff that's happening right now. It's being kind of enabling movements, restrictions, guidelines, laws, and censorship, the whole boat, skip, and cadoodle. I also know that um, through me, back in 2014, I had done 23 and Me. And in this process, there was a period of time from 2014 realizing when they first give it, gave out the um, area, I guess, where you, it's more, it was more general at the time. It just kind of gave you the areas of where your inheritance, uh, your bloodlines and such relatives, ancestry, this type of thing, what areas it would come from. At the time, I didn't have DNA relatives. They didn't have that slot where you push it and then down comes like all these connections of all these other people that have taken the test. It just basically gives you a range and then it actually put in there. You are a close relative of Mary Antoinette and a close relative strongly with King Solomon. At the time I really just, 2014 and I have been thinking about it for about two years probably since 20 2012 that I wanted to get this blood test thing done just because I was raised the way I was raised I had a lot of questions right my mom had died I've said this before 11 days before my second birthday so I was raised with seven older siblings that all had dark hair dark eyes and my dad dark hair dark eyes and I had curly hair and the blonde eyes, you know, the blue eyes. So in all of this, I also, I found a sister that shows that I have, a, a we share the same seed dad. Okay. So that rounds up a whole, it just rounds up a whole bunch of stuff that, makes me understand my wit, my character, my inquisitiveness, my art, my artistic side, um, my sportsmanship side, my athletic side, my drive, my focus. It's just, it just explains a lot of stuff. My, my spiritual side of being really, really into um, understanding at a very young age our realm. So I did this new and upcoming thing that really was just solved in the late nineties on the genome. And, and so now we have this DNA test thing and I do. And at the time my dad was alive, he basically said, Oh, you know, you don't have to do it. You know, you're my daughter. Nothing could change that. You know, he was being very knowing that he had made a promise to my mother before she died that he would raise me as his own and he did and he loved me very much. So anyways, I found my sister. Let me see if I can get the sunset a little bit in here. It's pretty, it's pretty out there. A little bit going on. Can you see that out there? I don't know. I can't see very much right now, but anyways, so in the genealogy part of it, I did, I found my sister and um, I was able to let my brothers know and some things happened within my family personally that I'm no longer in contact with people of that type of, of um, 
fit faith or faith or word, right? Like they, they broke their word with their own father at the time is their dad blood. And at the time I felt that they were my full blood family, but then I found out a few years later they weren't, and then I found my sister. So within this whole genealogy thing, I've also found the scriptures that talk about genealogy. And basically, if you were to go back so many generations, by the time you get to your fifth generations, there's so many sets of grandparents that you're looking almost in the trillion, like you're getting up into the... It's, it gets ridiculous. And by time you think each generation, 30 years old, so you have a child between, you know, by 30 years old, 25 and 40, but so we'll say 30. So that's a generation. So within a generation, as you go back and each one paired off with their grandparents and such, by the time you calculate that over five, 10, whatever generations, you've got so many generations. Well, in the New Testament of the Bible, there's these scriptures that basically says, don't worry about your genealogy. So don't. Um, I'm glad I found her because now I kind of just looked it up. I haven't been in there. I haven't even signed in. Um, there was a breach that happened through tech. And um, with this breach, apparently they've shut down all um, lines or all um, portals to anyone wanting to look up anybody of DNA. So they've cut that off. So people are not able to do what I did in 2019, which is it came down, showed me two brothers as half, and then this woman, and then I figured it out. And she was my half sister, which shares the same name as my sister that died when I was 22, which was so crazy. Teresa, Teresa, and they both went by Terry, like, so I have two sisters by the name of Terry. But anyways, in the New Testament, it basically states that you don't need to be circumcised by the flesh. It is through the heart and that through the heart is the Holy Spirit and the understanding of Jesus and why he came here to show us in, in true form the way and how to walk. Um, but also stating that in don't go wasting in vain your energy and time in genealogy because it extends for so long that anybody that is of Christ's heart, Christ's mind, you are within the one true God who's the creator. Now, many other gods and angels and whatever you want to label, whatever that is, right? There's many levels of it um, that are all in this realm, right? Like if there's good, there's bad. So you can't deny one and accept the other and then talk about like mysterious, magical, mystical stuff that's sky daddy and around and then not come back down to earth and be of reality. Like there's, you've got to have some kind of happy medium and balance and understand it. So this is where I'm at now. And, and I find leaving these types of messages for my kids so that they understand um, the true essence of your life. If we are a spark and a light, and that's what I have had two children, which is a spark and a light. And then that continues on. So it just branches off, right? It's, it's, it's a continuum, which each having its own soul within the spirit of one source, our creator, which is the one light, which is all energy, which is everything, right? And then it brings me into, after all figuring this out, and yes, it's of the heart and who's good and who's bad. We feel that, like we know that in general, like, you know, there's a lot of discussion about the morality of things. And I guess where you get your, um, those laws that are put upon your heart uh, within your own judgment prior to anybody or any entity judging you or putting a law on you or anything you should have within you, your own judgment. And then that creates out of your judgment, um, knowing of the good or the evil, right? The good, the bad, um, in between everything, like being able to have that discernment. It's very valuable to hold those things and hold them strong for yourself. 
um, understand them, look into them. I've been looking into right now, going past the age of when the biblical time and then the throw over the Romans and the coming um, in Jesus time and then just before in the Old Testament written by Moses. Like I, I kind of going into, you know, the whole Egyptian part of him and the Moses part and the original Old Testament and we've gone over the ball uh, Baal, and um, it was actually in their tradition and what they picked up that they turned it sadistic the way it is because the more I'm looking into it the f the seafaring Phoenicians the Finns who have the most unique language which it comes from them out of Atlantis I believe and they had the technique and the seafaring they went by Kani Ani which almost has like an Hawaiian Indian-ish kind of a sound to it, but they were seafaring and they created the papyrus and the Greeks named it Byblos, but in a town, a seaport town in Lebanon is called Byblos, which is named that by the Greeks. So if you were to think about that, it actually is dated factually back 8,000 years as a seaport and type situation. So the Bible's giving you 6,000 years, that's giving you eight. And then they were taking their traditions and rituals and such that they were doing from the Egyptian hieroglyphs, which is how they made the alphabet and writing and they came up with the papyrus. But in the Egyptian halls, there's not one thing ever written about the, this is what I try to find out. Is it real? Was not documented or written in hieroglyphs anywhere about the exodus of all these people and all these things that happened that were written in the New Testament of what actually happened and being scattered out. So the bottom line where I'm coming to and where I'm at now, it doesn't matter blood-wise when they claim that. Um, Jesus spoke about it many, many times about the God that they worship is not of. And so there's many people that are lost in supporting a system and something that has actually been tearing us down and actually there more than San Francisco carried the flag that represents, and they are named the number one, like capital that pushes this type of behavior and they push it. And in their doctrine and a lot of it, um, it is to destroy and to usurp until we're, we are destroyed basically. So we need to take in our own foundation of who we are as a people, how we want to treat our children. Um, we don't want to do the mind effery on them, let them be children and innocent and not all of this, like it, it's got to be so confusing, the he, she, all that kind of stuff. Like it's really sad what's happening, but um, this is just, I'm just giving you a little bit of hint of what's going on here. These people show up, all kinds of people across the street from me. This is another situation. This is dealing with squatters and homes and how they're dealing like in general, like that's a rental home over there. And I've been living here over, I'm going in my 11th year, but I just don't agree with a lot of the stuff that's going on over here across the street and the comings and the goings of people, you know, everybody's got to make their money the way they got to make their money, but not on my block. Now listen to them argue. Listen. Don't do drugs, kids. See that shit?
did I have to deal with this on a daily basis? Like, I'm just sitting here trying to record a recording. And this rolls up. They don't even live there, these two people, whoever that they are. Strangers among us. Sad world we're living in. Sad, sad world. Well, I've lost my concentration. I'm going to end this video. I just want you all to know that. Hang on to the realism of what's going on. Understand we've been lied to in so many different fascist ways. We're being pushed into a system um, that um, just understand what's coming down the pike. Be aware. God bless everybody. Take care. I feel sorry for people like that. I don't know what to do. Like, they don't live there, okay? I deal with this on the daily. And I don't know what to do. Now they're throwing it. Now they're, now they're going at it. Now they're, now they're hitting each other. Just going to act like I'm just sitting here doing my thing. But I'm going to record it because I'm done. Crazy. I'm sick of this shit. What do you do, right? You just film it. These people don't live there. And the ones that are inside, I think, sell. And they have a young boy. So do I, this is the question. Do I call for a well-being checkup for the boy? He's under 13, I believe. With over eight people living, coming and going in a two-bedroom home that's rented across the street from mine that I've owned for 11 years. And then we have random people like this rolling up and arguing with each other. So... The question is, do I do a well-being checkup or do I take the film down and I show it to them at the local police department and ask them if they want to look into that. Curious. Or is it none of my business and I'm supposed to live like this, like on my porch, trying to relax, watching the sunset. And, um, you know, doing my thing. And along comes chaos. Along comes chaos in our world. What do we do about it? If it's in your neighborhood, what do you do? They got a little child inside that house that they rent with the two bedrooms. They've got about eight people that live there, come and go, illegally, totally. And then they have people that come and go during the day in twos, barely walking, kind of crippled, like pretzels. And then they stop like that and they argue. And I got to sit on my porch and take that in. Do I feel safe? No. No. They rent. I own. I think I have a few rights. So do I go to the cops? Or um, do I...
do I call for a well-being checkup for the child? What's my best options? They've stolen from me before. Not this particular couple that's arguing right now, but these people across the street. When I took out a brand new leaf blower and I ran up the street, threw it into my mudroom. When I got back, forgot I was going to do the leaf blowing, came back to it two months later. And I'm like, the whole box, the whole, it was Bush, I believe, brand from Lowe's. It was, it was gone. Brand new leaf blower. So um, that was back in October. This is August. What do I do? I'm really just asking as a as a a human to other humans, and I know people are hurting, and it's sad. It's really sad. I don't know what to do anymore, and I want to save the children. You know, like any one of them, I can. I want to. I want. To, I've done so much. When I was in Vegas, I got three saved. Three children saved. So, God bless everybody. Keep your armor of God on. Be aware. Don't do it maliciously, I guess. You know, just do it to try and help. I want to help the family and maybe the boy himself. So, anyways, there's a lot of mosquitoes out here. It's been a long video. I'll talk to you later. God bless everybody.